Hi everybody and welcome to Cubicle 7's first video of 2021. Uh, we have loads to go through today and lots of exciting things to tell you about. So uh, I'm not going to waffle too much at the start. Um, there's um, uh, a dazzling array of talent that uh, we have uh, on the video today. Um, so I shall let them tell you all about all the exciting things that we've been working on. Um, uh, before we do, I've got a couple of exciting things that we've got our first things from the printer. Um, oh, uh, amazing. Enemy, enemy Within. This is Death on the Right Companion that was on top. So I picked it up first. Um, and then the Death on the Right Campaign book. Um, so we've got the oh, great. Looking fantastic. Um, and whoop, the one that's slightly too far away from me um, is the Collector's Edition as well, which oh, is oh, wow. looking <laughs> absolutely amazing. So do, do, do. Shiny. Especially these covers are amazing. I absolutely love getting our samples of these three because they're just gorgeous. They're so good. And the, the super secret handouts. So uh, that's and been very exciting that. to get those. So uh, we have um, given the uh, double plus thumbs up on those. So uh, they should be shipping from China imminently. Um, awesome. I can't wait to get those out to everybody. They are they're just gorgeous. So uh, yeah, that's been sort of like the, uh, I think one of the highlights of my week. Uh, so, um, uh, who else do we have with us? We have Elaine Lithgow, we have Dave Allen, we have Emmett Byrne, and we have Podrick Murphy. Um, so, who wants? Who should we go to first? Let's start. Well, let's go. Let's carry on with Waffle Up, shall we? Let's uh, let's head over to uh, to Podrick and Dave. Um, on um, how, how is Waffle Up going? What have you been up to? What's the most? What's the best? The highlights of your of your month so far. Um, well, it's it's been going uh, really well. I'm definitely going to let Dave talk more because this is his first video. And as we all know, I like to talk. But I will say I'm really relieved that it turned out the printer was a real company and not a very elaborate internet scam um, <laughs> that we, we were somehow taken in by over the last few months. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, it's, it's been great to get the, the stuff and see it. And their commitment to matching the quality we had already established was like amazing. And they were really on top of it. And we, you know, they, they constantly were checking everything. It was just great to work with them so i think for really those happy. for those not as familiar with, with cubicle seven we take that that's a really seriously we we, we yeah. love our books and um and you know it's, it's really important to us that, that we produce the most beautiful things that we can so it, it was a big deal for us getting a new printer and you know making sure that they were they were up to spec but um, unfortunately, with the, uh, the 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 printer that we started using the one the one that's going to be doing the um the limited editions um has done loads of um, stuff we like knew that. that we had a good printer lined up but uh yeah, uh, my your comment was a joke <laughs> we did not believe that there might have been <laughs> they, they have a very long pedigree um so that was good yeah definitely um but yeah it's, it's still sort of a thrill when it arrives and it's amazing isn't it yeah yeah so let's have a look at what um what's been coming up basically so a short recap on the last few releases of 2020 first and i'll hand it over to you dave you can talk a little bit about what's coming up or what we've done this year so far. Okay. So last year, we put out um, Archives of the Empire, which I think has gone really, really well. Now, when you're watching this, I think a couple of weeks ago, there will have been an update with a few tweaks. Um, we had a couple of typos and all the usual things to, to grab. Uh, we did also adjust the balance on a couple of weapons. The Drake fire pistols had been uh, underloaded. They needed more powder in each shot. So that was, that was knocked up. And also some slayer had called by and told us all these tales about what slayers axes were capable of and uh, we believed him but it turns out that that was not true and they've had their qualities balanced a little bit as well so they should be more in line and not totally overpowered uh, now um yeah, so to the cries of rage from all the dwarf the cries of rage. yeah you, you, no one has ever balanced anything and people have been like what a good job balancing that thing um i hope that the ones of you who are annoyed at me it's not more than usual so we'll just keep you're going in someone's grudge book <laughs> yeah, true. actually, there's there's a good item we should do as a book of grudges, and you can just keep it. And, and I hope, I um, no, but I, I hope that's more balanced and more reasonable, and uh, everyone likes that. So that is now with the printers, and I've signed off all of the things I can sign off, except the last copy, as you just seen from Dom, like the finished the final finished printed one. So that will be on its way to us soon, and that's really really exciting. I'm pleased with that, and that's now. So this is probably like a couple of weeks old or a week old anyway, by the time you're seeing it. Mm -hmm. um, Mid -time, Midtime also landed last year um, to, I think, really good response, and we were really pleased with it. Um, Dave did a ton of the writing and editing on that, and it came out great. Mm -hmm. um, the art, we also worked with a few new artists on it who 
along with our like established, really talented stable, brought some new stuff. Uh, I don't want to pick anyone out except to say that I think JG, uh, our own JG, did a really good job on the feel of Middenheim um, in the art in that book, and uh, just loads of standout pieces. But he's he's added a great base layer of like this is Middenheim. It's cold and isolated but strong, and that was the. I, I think he nailed that feeling, and it's really good. And that's his cover, isn't it? The, uh, the yeah. bit of that's his cover and a bunch yeah. of environmentals throughout. So, like bodies being tossed off the cliff of size and similar. He also did that. That one's great. I love that one. I, I like it. Yeah, <laughs> I like that one a lot. Just and like, the uh, the big blue two page spread as well. He did. Yes, of course. Mm. Um, yeah, which is is a kind of an extended version of the Power Behind the Throne companion cover. Um, mm -hmm. So we had that piece where like, well, do do it big and wide because it was such a great. Uh, introduction coming mm. along the yeah, the beautiful. causeways up into the city that it was bang on so mm. yeah Mindenheim's great and uh, Mindenheim is in the same situation as archives with the, with the printer we've I've checked over the color prints everything's looking really good and um that's with them basically so again i'm just waiting on that final book to sign off and that may well have been told by the time you're seeing this so we are speeding things along production wise um i think which is great so power behind the strong companion i wanted out in january but it's going to be february some art is delayed and it's not the artist's fault it's just sometimes these things take longer than we expected is this you're doing so, compliment sandwich oh the art's great sandwich, yeah. but it's so the really fault good the book is uh, delayed but the oh, art's so gonna be great so uh the art's gonna be so good it, it, it is really good and it's coming together really nicely so that one is like the graphic design is done it's been proofread um yeah our, our excellent partners in games workshop have it and they've looked over it and they're pleased as well so it's just about finishing off these last few bits of art and getting that out into everybody's hands. So I think that's nice. There's a few really nice bits in that. Um, I think I've touched on them elsewhere, but like there's a lot of extra NPCs who are just as detailed, if not more so, than the ones you find in Power Behind the Throne. So they're a very natural fit if you want to extend out that campaign. Um, I don't want to say too much because spoilers. Yeah. Are too much. I but think it's worth saying that we've thought a bit about some um, party types like roguish parties, for example, might find it a bit hard to get invested in Power Behind the Throne because it's all mixing with high society. So we've uh, suggested some uh, less sort of well-to-do people who you can uh, meet and uh, get you involved in the plot. Yeah, so your gang of ne'er-do-wells who stumbled onto Middenheim from the south can uh, more convincingly be brought into a plot which involves like quite high society. Um, so yeah, they're there to help you with that kind of thing. We've got some new creatures in there, a couple of kind of like adventures that are, you can slot in or use as part of Power Behind the Throne or are totally standalone. Um, the usual companion stuff that I think really extends that out mm. uh, and should be nice. There's also, I guess, a tier of um, uh, the Duchy of Middenheim there if you want to bring your uh, Reichland trading career from Death of the Reich into Midland. Uh, without the canals, it's harder, but you can absolutely load up a cart and just make your money on selling salt. And that, some people love that, apparently. Rogues! Uh, uh, the canals of the land. <laughs> yeah, <Rogue. laughs> a type of special land canal. Um, so you can you can bring that through, which I think is, it will also help bring like characters and careers who are invested in that into Power Behind the Throne without feeling like we've totally burned their barge, to use a metaphor. No, the roads um, of the old world are only slightly less muddy than the canals. So yeah, it's true. I mean, if you had a, a reasonable boat, you could probably sail some of them in winter. So, um, so yeah, that's that's excited about that. And I, I think that, that I just wanted to touch on the death and the Reich um, stuff. But I think really Dom has blown anything I could say out of it, out of the water. Uh -huh. It's there. It looks <laughs> Sorry. good. The covers are nice and shiny, and everything fits in its slipcase. And the slipcase goes with the other slipcase and. All that yeah. sort of thing. So, we're re really, really excited about that, and it's great to get that one out to you. Um, and now we have that process nailed down. We can just send power behind the throne through and be like the same again, please. Yeah. Um, which will help to get that. You know, we've 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 culled our teething problems there nicely. I think so. Not problems, just you know, adapting to a new a new. No, oh, it's it's all you know, whenever you make a big change of supplier. Yeah, you know, it doesn't really matter what you do, does it? You know, <laughs> but but whenever you make that big change. It takes a bit of time, but um, yeah, I think the process has gone as smoothly as we could have hoped. It's, yeah. uh, it's been really good. Yeah, it's been, it's been very positive. It's like when you go to a new supermarket and you want to find where the soup is. It's never the same place. <laughs> um, so we, we, we've worked through that. So with, with that stunning um, visual for you there, I'm going to just hand it over to Dave <laughs> to talk about what we've done. Because that was all 2020. Uh, and now Dave's going to talk a bit about what we did in this year. Uh -huh. Well, um, Simon Wiseman's been doing quite a lot of writing for us recently, and uh, last year we produced a PDF that he wrote that was about monuments throughout the Reichland, 
and uh, it was very well received. And we followed it up this year with a little PDF about uh, five different shrines to Sigma that you can find in the Empire. So um, uh, my favourite in particular is the uh, one that involves the legend of Uthwak and the Storm Riders, which uh, dates back to White Dwarf 114. Mm. So it's... Uh, Developed on some very old lore there that uh, some people might appreciate. And uh, Simon's also um, helping us out a lot with the Outdoor Book, which is coming up. So uh, that's the Shrines of Sigmar PDF. And uh, we just released an adventure that uh, I wrote a couple of years ago called The Blessing That Drew Blood. And um, it's a murder mystery set in Ubersreich. And if you've been playing in and around Ubersreich, it uh, relates to a lot of the other plots and um, locations in the starter set and the other Uber's Rack adventures that we've produced. And I don't want to embarrass Dave, but it's a fantastic adventure. We, we had such fun play, play testing that one. It was, um, yeah, there's some, some fantastic moments in there. It's, yeah, it's good. And just in case, to get, again, to embarrass Dave, um, <laughs> it's a really nice one to pull on directly from the starter set if mm. you've gone through that recently. Um, maybe you're finished doing the rounds or whatever. It's got a, it's got a similar vibe and a lot of like quite memorable characters and uh, it ties into all those existing locations. So it's it's really nicely baked into Uberstrike. You could adapt it to elsewhere, but it, it should be running Uberstrike. It's really good. And uh, it and three other adventures that we've produced over the last few months are going into Uberstrike Adventures Two, which is going to be uh, released in the not too distant future. Um, but we're going to need to get through our fifth of the second round of Uber Strike Adventures first. And uh, we've been playtesting that one recently as well. So that one's written by Dara, who also wrote um, Double Trouble and Bait and Witch. Oh, yeah. yeah uh -huh. Really good. Yeah. So it's another really good one. Uh, but I can't tell you much about it because we're halfway through playing it. So. <laughs> it, so I don't want to spoil it. It's very well for up, isn't it? It's very yeah. well for up. <laughs> I, I heard certainly the reports from it, yeah. and I was like, oh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was um, a, a lot of laughter. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, some of which was supplied by the players and some by the adventurer. Right? <laughs> and um, so that's going to go into Uber Strike Adventures 2, which, as I say, is going to be due out in the not-too-distant future. Um, and then uh, the next thing we're going to work on as well is um, a new developer's diary is due out talking about uh, what we've done on the enemy within. And this one's going to look at some of the imagery that we've produced for um, the special edition covers. So perhaps you could show people again, Dom, but uh, the uh, nice sort of shiny woodcut designs that go onto the special edition covers. We've got um, Sam Manley, who comes up with the... Uh, sort of sketch concept and then Rachel Mack and our graphic designer who does all the sort of woodcut detail and the extra shininess. They're so good. There's so actually a lot uh, of feedback back and forth between the two of them on design, but to find out what you'll have to read the dev diary that we we'll wrote together. Yeah. I always find that really yeah. interesting as well because it's they're kinda of happen in parallel to one another. So it's yeah, yeah it, it's really nice and so much goes into it and the uh, various different symbology and semiotics and the, the the stuff that's used within it as well. Yeah, and we'll be going into that quite a lot and talking about why the figures were chosen, why the colours were chosen, and what some of the little um, knickknacks and designs in the corners of the images are about. So I think it's back to you, uh, Padre, to uh, discuss oh, the next bit. So it is. Yeah, so that one will be out soon. And I guess just to touch on the dev gyre, I think the next one then will be about the Horned Rat. So Graham has provided some of his thoughts. Unsurprisingly, mm -hmm. that would be where that's coming from. So that would be exciting too. Um, yeah, and that's, yeah, well, I'll touch on the horn around in a moment, I think. So what's coming up next? So we're going to have Patrons of the Reichland coming out quite soon, um, which is another kind of like small, punchy PDF. Um, it's, I, I like it. It's like four quite powerful NPCs who are a little bit larger in life and can engage your characters in a kind of like a string of plot hooks that lead to quite a... Um, that, that lead to like the rough outline is given to the GM of like a campaign essentially you could run for like for these people um, and all of them would have like quite sizable impacts on uh, the Empire maybe but the Reichland certainly uh, so there's four of those the first one has without giving too much away a, a scholar a midwife an agitator and a preacher 
Um, they all have their own kind of secrets, a little bit a la um, monuments of the Reichlander shrines. And they all also come with a new endeavor that's um, specific to them. So for some of them, it's like, you can do a research endeavor with them, but also here's extra things that can happen on that endeavor. So the endeavors happen in the between adventure section. So kind of like while you're engaged with this person, they could be like a patron to the party or a patron to a couple of specific characters and you can go to them and um, do your endeavors in between. And you can have some quite unexpected results from the endeavors, which I think people might enjoy. So that's the first of a two-parter because we'll have patrons of the Reichland two then a couple of months later. So we're going to try and keep that PDF content trickling along. I know some people really love to only see things in print, um, but with the way things are, I think the PDF content is good. It's a quick turnaround to get like things out to um, to the, the fans and uh, it's good engaging content, I think, it, it, in a large part. So um, I, hope, yeah. I hope everyone enjoys it. Um, so that's patrons, which I'm excited about. Um, after that, Imperial Zoo. So I think we were finishing, the last time we talked about Imperial Zoo, we were finishing the writing and that is now done. So that's great. Um, we have the first kind of like batch of art in of uh, which is looking really nice. There's a, a particular style we're hitting for this book and we're nailing it uh, nicely. <laughs> it's been a little bit of a, not a slog, but you know, there was a bit of refinement to get there. So we have the first like 10 creatures done now, I think. Um, and the next batch will be in shortly enough. So that's going pretty good. Um, we found uh, an artist who uh, we're excited to be working with on it and also was quite happy to draw a goblin picking his nose, which is you know clutch. So huh. we, we got that one. Give the people what they want. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> uh, because I often find myself looking and thinking, well, how do goblins remove the snot? If there's a lot yeah, of them exactly, they yeah. pick. Mm -hmm. um, so that's good. And he did a really lovely squig as well, which I think is like a standout. Yeah, the squig is actually. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Um, and other things as well that I, I mean, there's a really cool, great stag. There's a, there's a few nice bits in there. I think people are gonna really enjoy that. Um, yeah, so that's um, Altdorf. Then I guess we'll to turn back on the, the enemy within for a minute. So the power behind, power behind the throne companion will be out very shortly. It may even be out depending on when this video has gone out, um, but I'm sure it'll be in the description or the doobly-doo um, as to when that's uh, out, but like it, in the next couple of weeks from the time of recording. And the next part is the Horned Rat. So the Horned Rat is very exciting because it's new. Uh, it's based on an idea that was like, they, they had been kicked around back originally um, for this section of the enemy within, but it ended up being something running Kislev instead. Um, Graham has done a brilliant job of like designing and uh, coming up, like writing the campaign for it. Um, we've put together like a, a team of kind of interested parties. Some of them will be familiar to you who are helping us to make sure it's the best possible um, piece of the enemy that it can be, because it's hard not to be nervous about adding something that's relatively new, you know, that is, is new in terms of writing, even if not in concept, to um, such a prestigious campaign. So uh, if, if Ever I so slightly nerve wracking, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> if I sound nervous. I mean, that's why, and that is the one where I'll be watching diligently, but we wanted to get to run that by a lot of people and be like, what do you think? You know, does it play tests well? Does it read well? Does it feel like, a piece of the enemy within because you know 20 years later you can still remember death on the reich npcs um and the, you know the instigating incident of the of the enemy within is, is relatively unforgettable mm. how do you make sure you do that and make something worthy so obviously you pull in graham davies and wring all of the talent out of them that you can um but i i it, you need like polish and so on i think we're i think we're doing it i think it's going to be amazing so very excited about that, and it's Q2, yeah. um, and it should be early Q2 as well. I so, think uh, oh, um, GMs can sort of expect to see a bit more of the um, threads that were introduced in the first three parts of the enemy within continue throughout the, the latter sections this time around. Indeed, because there's, there's an opportunity to, to draw mm. on, you know, what's happened. Yeah, yeah essentially that. I, I think we've got a little bit of leeway to, or a little bit more perspective is probably the right word, to have been able to tie those in. Um, and bring them along in a satisfactory way and conclude them. So I think that people will be pleased with how everything that's teased earlier on keeps getting developed um, with the Horned Rat and concluded with satisfaction in Empire and Ruins. So that, that will be exciting. Um, cool. And then I think we'll talk about Altdorf. And for that, I would hand things back to you, Dave. Yeah, so uh, Altdorf's uh, project I've been sort of heading up uh, since last summer. And uh, we've had um, four really great writers helping me, so I'd just like to quickly acknowledge uh, Simon Wiseman again and Clive Oldfield, June Hornberg, Jude Hornberg, 
and um, Magnus Sita. So uh, they're all been involved in either um, Warhammer writing before, either as fans or as contributors to official products. And they've done a really good job of um, making sure that every shop of note or um, College of Heraldry, of which there are two, and uh, the palace and the cathedral all um, get great write-ups that acknowledge all the work that's been done on Outdoor in novels and role-playing products in the past, but also uh, loads of great new content in that book as well. Uh, and we, Outdoor is a city book, Dave, right? For Outdoor, obviously. Yes, it's going to be on book. the same... Um, it's going to be like the same sort of level of detail as people got in the Middenheim book. But as Altdorf's a bigger city, uh, it'll be a much bigger book than the Middenheim book. Um, so I think we've worked out it's landing at just over 220 pages. Yeah, it should be two, 224. Middenheim was 160. Uh -huh. All in. That's a big old book. <laughs> it's it's going to be a big book. book. Yeah. yeah, so if you looked at Middenheim and were like, there's just not enough plot hooks here. I need another <laughs> 150. Yes. Um, You'll, you'll find that, you'll find like great descriptions of things. I, I'd seen the storyboard that David done, uh, which is the first time like seeing all of the content in place. And you just get such a good feeling for the districts mm. as you flick through wow. it and everywhere is its own character. The NPCs are exactly what you'd expect from what for, you know, larger than life, memorable, and also, you know, believable and motivated. And it's, you just have endless fodder for stuff. And I think because it's the, the capital of the empire and the largest city of the Reichland. It's, uh, I, I just really like it. I love Midnight. Midnight mm -hmm. feels like you go a place and you're doing Midnight stuff. Outdoor feels like here's a capstone piece for the Reichland. Um, and it's, it's, it's really nice. So it'll be useful for playing um, Empire and Ruins in the same way that Midnight is useful for Power Behind the Trump. Yes. Uh, completely standalone as well. Sorry, Dave. That's exactly right. So we're, we're thinking about Empire and Ruins in light of um, the Outdoor book and vice versa. So the two projects are like feeding back into one another quite nicely. Um, and uh, had uh, room for a bit extra. So recently we've also taken on uh, another freelance writer, Alfred Nunez, and he's going to tell us all about Outdoor's dwarf community. Um, so once uh, that material is set in place and illustrated, we'll be ready to release the book. Yeah, because the book is completely written and edited except for that section because we had a bit of room mm. at the end and we were just like, more dwarves, get mad out. <laughs> um, uh -huh. Essentially, so yeah, that was, that was good. Sounds good. Uh, and then following on from Outdoor, uh, we've got a fair new, more PDF downloads and more adventures planned. So, um, so we've thought about a series of adventures that start and end whilst you're on a boat because uh, something we thought about the early part of the Enemy Within campaign is that you're on the barge an awful lot, but most of the adventures that were written at the same time as the Enemy Within campaign assume that you're traveling by road. And we'd like to have uh, some where you're on your barge and something interesting or sinister or dangerous occurs, um, but you're left on your barge again at the end of the adventure. So uh, we've got the first one of those is written and being produced at the moment, and uh, we've got ideas for more. Cool. Um, and uh, as Patrick says, we're uh, getting another patron's document ready. And um, what else is there? There's uh, the last of the Ubersrock Adventures. Yes, we talked about that already. And the plan to do a special Mitterfruel or Easter adventure is um, being kicked around as well. So we just uh, started planning that today, actually. Yeah, Excellent. Um, Excellent. and in terms of things that are written, there's also a, a nice little grimoire of spells um, that mm -hmm. will be dropping in PDF as well. So I think it'll be the most like spells just for wizards, like Arcane Lords of All Eight Winds, that we've done in one thing so far. So that should be a nice mm. thing to keep people occupied um, while we prepare larger magic things. Uh, and they kind of have a utility flavor. So um, I, if you're clever, you can use them to achieve anything. But um, even as they are, I think they should give people some options for not just exploding heads and burning down buildings. Um, you know, doing doing nice little interesting things. So I always like that with wizards, where they have, you know, they can do something that nobody else can do with the right utility spell. So um, I think I think I hope people will like that. That'll be on PDF too. Excellent. Well, that all sounds awesome, Project. Um, and uh, I think we've got some new things coming for virtual tabletops too. 
Yeah, that's right. So we're going to have some new modules for Roll20 coming out very soon. So that's very exciting. That will be the starter set and Rough Nights Hard Days. And over in the Foundry VTT, which is the second of the two um, that we officially support, there will be another new module coming soon. And it's not an enemy within thing. It's something else. Ah. So, oh, fantastic. Um, yeah. <laughs> so an absolute ton of content coming to all the virtual tabletop people. And I, I don't... I think you know. I, I would, um, you know, if you haven't tried out any of the virtual tabletops, it's really worth just, just go, go and have a look and see what you think. It's something that um, that, that I was new to um, at the at the start of the pandemic, and obviously, obviously, we, we uh, we've all been playing online. So um, uh, that was really the first time that I had a look at them as well, and and, and I was really blown away actually just by how um, how much they add to that experience. And you know, I think even when we're all back around the table again, I'll probably have it running. Um, to, to, to assist me in, in running things. And, uh, it, it's hard to kick the character creation habit when you get used to on a VTT. You know, yeah. It's so yeah. easy to roll up characters. You're like, oh, paper. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, I would recommend you have, have a look. And um, if you haven't used them before, it's, um, yeah, uh, as, as a, a complete beginner to it all, I, I, I can say I wholeheartedly recommend it. Yeah. So I think that's a lot of what we've been up to in Wufferbland. Um, it's been it's been going good really well i think and we're just going to keep that going into 2021 and you know we keep the fans as happy as we possibly can um and it's been great for us as well like we both all, we love talking about the thing that stood out to us the most in you know a, a project so yeah. um it's been a blast and yeah Excellent. And definitely, you've heard us talk about Warframe enough now for a while. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that uh, I don't think that's possible. <laughs> we can probably just uh, go live twenty four seven. My, my ninety eight part podcast, Podrick talks about is about Warframe is available soon. Uh, it runs to one hundred and forty hours. Um, <laughs> well, the rest of our lives, as, as we know it. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Lane and Emmett, uh, I think we're going to talk about Age of Sigmar next, according to my piece of paper. Um, so uh, what what have you been working on? Yeah, so um, we're, we're hoping to do a monthly production update, specifically for kind of Age of Sigmar, I think possibly on some of the other lines as well, where we just get mm -hmm. into some, uh, some detail on some of the other releases. But, um, but we'll also have our... our company-wide production update um that'll be going out regularly just with more details about what's a print and all that kind of stuff so that is either out at this stage for february or will be out very soon um so for soulbound um we released streets of brightspear and troubled brewing just before christmas so streets of brightspear myself and elaine wrote which was a which was a ton of fun um elaine do you want to give us a rundown on streets of brightspear again give us give us your yeah sure uh we spoke a bit about in detail in Streets of, Streets of Bright Spear um, in the last update, I seem mm. to remember, because that was yeah. when it was just coming out. Um, but it's essentially a nice companion for if you're looking for a lot of good mechanical content for if you're setting your adventures in Bright Spear. So if you're going through the starter set, Faltering Light, um, or if you're maybe picking up Trouble Brewing, um, or what was Fateful oh, Night? Fateful Night, that was the one, uh, which was our halloween adventure and then our christmas adventure mm. um so streets of bright spirit has lots of new items for the markets it's got a bunch of new endeavors uh, that you can do in the city lots of crazy stuff learning chaos spells and um uh, lots and lots of stuff i'm not going to go into yeah. too huge detail because like i say you can drop into the last update if you want to yeah, see more on yeah. that um so but it's a but it's a great companion piece i'm going to be running my own bright spear adventures shortly and i'm very glad i have that now. oh me too actually i actually we had our oh, yeah. session zero at my home group last night so uh, I'm, I'm going to be pillaging the streets of bright spear pdf i saw a lot of people on the discord say that or on, on a couple of the forums say they picked it up they're not running the, their game in bright spear mm -hmm. but um very easily just take the endeavors and the items and things and just transport them to another city people are running campaigns in like shayish or Girin or wherever mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely one of the nicest selling points for it, in my uh, in my personal opinion, <laughs> was the uh, artifact creation. There's a bunch of tables in there that allow your GM to create random, um, like arcane artifacts and things. Um, so, uh, so that's quite good for, and you can lift that and, and use that anywhere in the mortal realms. So, who wrote um, that? But I mean, it was one of us, honestly. <laughs> I lose track of these things. We all know it was um, you, Elaine. All the good ideas are yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
so so there's that yeah and then trouble brewing uh was released just for christmas that was cat evans uh wrote that one um and that's got the brewmaster archetype in it as well as a wonderful pub crawl-esque adventure through the streets of bright spear um with the uh, oh gosh bugman bugman oh, bugman uh, jack of bugmanson the, uh, jack the of ninth bugmanson. The ninth. Yes. I'm like, is it the ninth or the eleventh? I can't remember which, if it's IX or XI. <laughs> um, the, uh, there's, a, there's a there's a lot. Yeah, I think the Brewmaster archetype for a lot of people is now their favorite car drawn archetype, which is <laughs> you basically have a keg on your back and it has magic beer in it, and you can just use your beer tap as a gun to knock your enemies down as well, which is uh, mm-hmm. which is a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it's definitely a very nice, uh, light hearted and fun archetype uh, to play. Yeah. So so that's been good. Yeah. The, uh, and then we also released um, Crucible of Life uh, just a few weeks ago for that's the next adventure for Shadows in the Mist. So that was written by Martin Lloyd. Um, it's quite unlike anything I think we've done for Soulbound so far. Um, it sees you venturing out into like a deep jungle outside Anvil Guard um, with a, about 50 or more strong expedition. Um, mm-hmm. But as you travel, like people start to die and get sick, and you have to take on various roles of leading the expedition, um, which is really, really unique. Because you know, generally, as your character, it's not a huge threat because you're soul bound and you're powerful. But you will lose people to monsters or sickness, or they'll just abandon you and steal your um, steal your supplies to get back to the city. So other people end up dying because there's not enough food, and yeah, so. Uh, so it's a really interesting one. And then at the end of it, you get to do a big dungeon that will also try and kill you. That has a terrifying boss at the end that I won't spoil. But uh, uh, we actually, the boss is so dangerous that we have a box box out in it recommending uh, that the players just run away. Basically. <laughs> yeah. Although how many players will run away? Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. Well, after the first two or three get eaten, I'm sure they'll probably get the idea. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's got to be some lessons there. Yeah, uh, but I do. I do love the setup of that adventure. It provides a very unique source of pressure and danger because mm. a lot of the time, you know, it's uh, you're, you're the biggest threat is your characters getting uh, nommed by a monster. But with this, you're you're re- directly responsible for this large group of people. And every time you lose someone, that's you know, mm. it's your fault. And yeah, it's got exactly. a nice kind of the stress of having to look after all these gosh darn. And people is just it's yeah. tough yeah absolutely when uh, your characters are weeping and everyone that died remember how happy these two looked as they yeah. discussed this source of pressure <laughs> yeah it's great <laughs> like, the uh, mortal but... realms are not for playing around in let's be honest <laughs> <laughs> you left the city you took your life in your own hands it's your own fault <laughs> yeah yeah there's some really cool stuff and that's so why at the end of you basically you're going to find a lost storm vault which are these ancient um temples slash dungeons slash vaults where there's powerful magic items were locked away by sigmar and usually items from the age of myth Um, and the magic around them is so powerful that it messes with people's senses and makes them impossible to find but with the events of the necroquake magic went crazy so now the magic is kind of broken and you can actually find this place um so there's there's a really interesting um kind of backstory to the dungeon as well which is which is really nice Mm -hmm. Um, and then coming up in the next few weeks, we should have Petrified Wood, which mm-hmm. is yours, Elaine, if you want to give us the... Yeah, um, this has been one I've been working on for a while now. Um, I don't want to go into like too many details, because, and I feel like I said this with the last thing when I was writing um, the Wrath and Glory um, Duty Beyond Death, but there's a bit of a mystery in this um, Petrified Wood. It's wrapped in this noir investigation um sort of theme to it so it's as as with all of the shadows in the mist campaign it's set in anvil guard which is this dark moody street uh, city where the streets are constantly shrouded in this green mist and everything and it kicks off when you find a uh, a petrified corpse um in the streets and it's this sort of murder mystery investigation of trying to find out who who the who the murderer is why and in typical soulbound fashion um it goes from 0 to 60 very quickly and yeah. you know you're you're not uh, very quickly you go from trying to find this individual murderer to oh there's a much bigger thing going on here and lots of lives are on the line yeah. and then we we wrap it up again in a nice sort of noir 
ending and everything it was great fun to write yeah it has an absolutely amazing climax so it's going to be on the cover so basically you you discover the petrified corpse husk of a sylvanus a kernoth hunter um, Mm -hmm. and you have to discover what happened so the uh the 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 foliant in anvilgard that keeps back the jungles is supposed to be non-toxic to sylvanus um but you find a petrified sylvanus and so you have this kind of almost risk of the sylvanus in the city turning on the city and you have to try and you've got a kind of a ticking clock and then later on you get a real ticking clock um <laughs> but yeah the, the the climax to it i was incredibly excited just reading it i would love to would love to run it hate to play through it because of the stress um, <laughs> I, I do like my oh. uh my kobayashi maru-esque <laughs> you have to you have to make tough choices in yeah. this timeline and there are there is no way to win yeah, hundred percent, which yeah. is just the essence of Soulbound for me. Yeah, yeah, so, it's, it's decisions that are going to have impact, and then you're like, okay, well, you just try and make it as as less bad as possible. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, so that's that that's really really nice. Um, that cool. should be coming next, and then we have the last two adventures, which are um, balancing the scales in Aquanerglus, both written by Casey She, and uh, they're coming along really well. We'll chat about them them in in the future and. Then, Elaine, you're also writing a section on for the Anvil Guards, for Shadows in the Mist. Um, mm-hmm. Spoilers for anyone for Broken Realms Maratha, you have been warned. But um, Elaine is currently writing up a, a 10-page guide to Harkurin, which is what Anvil Guard becomes after the events of Broken Realms Marathi. Yeah, that's been very good fun to write. Um, one of the things we've been wanting to do with it is Broken Realms Marathi takes a very top-down view of the grand betrayal and all these sort of things and you're, you know, Marathi seeking ascension and armies clashing and everything. But we wanted to sort of look at it from the opposite way. So you're someone on the streets and what happens when suddenly um, all of this all of this chaos starts not not capital c chaos um all of this you know chaos on the the streets and you know what happens when people's allegiances are suddenly brought into the light and the black scale coil and all these sorts of things mm. play their big moves um and obviously as soulbound in the streets and everything how is that how does that look how does that affect you um, and how does it affect the common people so that's been great to write yeah um and then we're including some one page uh adventures in there as well set post um broken realms when it is when anvil guard has become harkron yeah uh, it should be really cool because it's like okay well i think we've got to be like okay so what happened to this character that we know from playing through shadows in the mist what were they doing during um, Broken Realms Marathi when, when Marathi and the Daughters of Cain uh, attacked the city so yeah there's, there's some really nice stuff in there mm-hmm. uh, which should be good um, I've jumped all over the place here but we also just released Doomed Lands which was written by uh, Cody Falk um, which is a really nice PDF it's uh, kind of gives some advice on using Doom in your campaign and then it has 21 locations in it so three locations in seven different realms not a Azir because uh, Sigmar doesn't go into that um, let his lands become corrupt but it's uh, each location has escalating doom so depending on how high the doom goes um, it affects the, the the actual location itself where I think we've talked about there's a farm where you know things are okay as doom gets up crops start to fail and then when it gets to the top like all out bloodshed break, breaks out but um, with a lot of other ones I, I can't remember there's one mentioned in uh, well Shaish I think where you just start to wither and die. I can't remember. There's you lots of great forgetting, ones. Forgetting, you know, it starts eating your memories and yes. things. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cody's done a great job on that, and he's been talking a lot on um, the Soulbound Discord about sort of some of the design philosophies behind mm. it. And I really love this idea that it it really helps bring out the personality of the different realms. Um, because one of the the goals for him apparently is paraphrasing. Of course, he's not here. Um, but was that um, the the realms as doom increases they start to sort of react and revert and become more so uh, more like sort of embodying their elemental affinities and things like that so yeah Shaif increasing shadows and obfuscation and things like that or um, Gairan um, there's there's a wonderful one where 
and the these lush gardens begin to remember trauma from when Nurgle rampaged through the land. So scars start opening up and it starts reacting in the same way that like antibodies would react to a wound and things like this. And it's it really adds that nice um these are mutable realms with personalities mm-hmm. and things like that. So yeah. I really love it. It's really it's I saw someone mention that say on the on the Discord as well that they plan on using say the the parched farm one, which is a farm starts to you know how what happens with Doom, but they're gonna put transplant that to Brightspear and use it for mm-hmm. the hanging gardens that are there, which is a really nice, clever way of using it, but it helps give some guidance on how to use Doom in your campaign. Um, Ooh. which is really good. Yeah. Um, oh, it's really good. So now or next we have Champions of Order. Um, which might be out now by the time this video goes out, but it's uh, it's very close to being done. Um, all the art is done. The uh, I think we're just doing the last few bits of layout, just uh, making some adjustments, um, and it will be probably back from proofreading. Uh, I'm pretty much ready to go. That that looks great. We've talked about it a lot. Uh, I think maybe we'll chat about it a bit more um, on the next video, but lots more archetypes. Um, the Luminath <laughs> Realms are in there. We've got too much to talk about at the moment. <laughs> we do, we do, yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying to, we'll have to take some next time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the yeah, Champions of Order has new archetypes, new talents, new spells, new miracles. Um, so if we haven't mentioned before, but there are miracles of Teclas and miracles of Grungni, which is really interesting uh, for people to actually tap into. Um, yeah, talents, archetypes, the Luminath are in there. There's sub-factions within each faction that you choose. So in our session zero last night, one of, uh, one of our players was playing a tree revenant and they decided to be from the um heartwood glade which actually more almost worship kernoth rather than lariel so their ability is a uh, called wild hunt which increases all their allies melee and defense for the whole uh, melee and accuracy for the whole combat but decreases their defense um because they're kind of giving into the the wild hunt uh, so there's lots of that kind of stuff which which is great um and then the bestiary, which is all the writing is pretty much done. I think, um, Elaine, when you're finished the Harkur and stuff, you're just going to jump on the Skaven. Um, I so we to show my horns again. Like yeah, we've, we've, we've a very, more. very Skaven heavy start to the year on, <laughs> on both, both. Yes. Games. Yeah, we've, it's been funny. Oh, well, you're, you're getting good runner as well. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, so now that 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 should be great. That's going really well. It's going um, through editing pretty quick. It should come together um, quite quickly, hopefully. Uh, so the production update has a, has an update on that. I think we're looking at uh, late Q one, early Q two for PDF. I need to check for definite. But uh, there's tons of great stuff in there. Um, I was looking at the Mega Gargant stat block yesterday and just laughing and laughing, <laughs> um, which is it's just amazing. It's just you you just won't win. <laughs> but uh, but thankfully uh, our other book Steam and Steel we have coming out, which is all about um, uh, weapons and ships and um, forging in the mortal realms. Uh, you will be able to basically just take an ironclad from that and fight a uh, mega gargant from the beast area, which will be a, be a lot of fun. Um, so you did the outline for that one, Elaine. So I think we have some really nice stuff in there. If you want to touch on kind of what we what we chatted about a bit. Yeah, definitely. Um, so the the primary goal in my head with Steam and Steel is if you can build it, it should be in here. So we're everything from. You know, oh, you are a gunslinger and you want to craft some special ammo for your gun all the way up to, as Emmett said, we want to work together and to build a, an Arcanaut, like, massive airship decked out with cannons and things like this. So there's a lot in there. There is, yeah. yeah um, I, was, I was working on the outline today as well, kind of adding some more stuff. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> Yeah, and we're trying to keep it... Um, it's not just... Um, Iron World Arsenal or Caradron, it's crafting in the free cities and with different materials and talking a lot about uh, how different species and different places in the mortal realms and everything craft and use different crafting materials and things like that. So should be really nice, not just for if you were, say, a crafting heavy player, um, but also really good for GMs who are looking to sort of how does how are things built in Garan? How are things built in these places? And and how do these different species approach crafting? Is it 
hardcore industrialism that you'd see in Greywater Fastness, where all that matters is that you can make guns that will fire and as many as possible, or is it artisanal crafting where you're using only the finest of materials and, and uh, things like that. So there's a lot of really nice roleplay potential for just you know, different types of crafting and different levels of crafting and yeah, scale of crafting. There's some really good stuff in there. Um, I think by the time this goes out, we will have shown the cover for both the uh, Bestiary and Steam and Steel, and I love them both so much. Um, the Bestiary has a Mega Gargant fighting an Ancient Magma Droth, which is incredible, and then the Steam and Steel is uh, Caradron versus Flesh Eater Quartz, which is just incredible. Um, <laughs> I think I said... Um the my favorite thing about the cover for the bestiary is we have our Ic iconics on there and it's the first time i've ever looked at the iconics and they look a little bit like i'm not sure we can get involved in this it's <laughs> normally they're in the middle and they're being you know the, the heroes and, and kicking all sorts of butt um but it's the first time where they're sort of like uh <laughs> yeah, it's an element of nope <laughs> yeah, yeah let them fight <laughs> yeah they know what they're doing. Let's just leave. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kong versus uh, Kong versus um, Godzilla mm. type thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'll skim through the rest. So we had we mentioned in our update last month at the start of the year, uh, Black and Earth, which is our new adventure book set in Giran, um, mm -hmm. and then two new supplements, Champions of Death and Champions of Destruction. So we have a blog post update on those if people want a little more information. But uh, they're, they're kind of upcoming releases. Um, awesome. Another PDF is coming out from uh, Cody has written through Fire and Smoke, which is using interesting environmental hazards in your game. Um, similar kind of stuff, really, really great stuff. And some more PDFs that we will announce in our monthly update that I won't bo even bother talking about now. We can talk about the next <laughs> one. Yes, I was going to say, I, th I think we're, we're, uh, we're running out of time. Um, we really are. Which, in a good way, in a good way. So I, I think ne we'll, we'll come back to Ross and Glory a bit more uh, in depth next time. Um, yeah. We have uh, recently uh, released Forsaken System, or the Player's Guide to the Forsaken System, which is uh, fantastic. Uh, check it out. Lots of new archetypes and information on the, uh, the Gilead system. Um, and yeah, well, lots of good stuff. So have a look at that on the website. Um, next time, we will also take a look at uh, what's been in development for Victoriana and uh, Doc Doctor Who and lone wolf um so uh, yeah lots of uh, lots of exciting stuff to come in the next episode um which uh yeah keep an eye out for on the website and on our social media so uh, that's cubicle7games.com um sign up to the newsletter on the website as well um and that will keep you up to date with everything that's going on we're on twitter facebook and instagram um, and look out for uh, Warhammer Wednesday, Mortal Realms Monday, and 40k Friday posts on social media. Um, and of course, uh, this YouTube channel. So uh, uh, that's where you can find us in the meantime. Um, so great. So yeah, look after yourselves and um, have uh, great fun with everything. And um, look forward to seeing you next time. Next time we'll start from the bottom up. <laughs> it's just like it's just like our Monday meetings. It's where just we like start, a meeting. Yeah. Can't yeah. start with Wolf. Yeah. 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 We, we just won't let Dave and Porra be on the call next time. Oh. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> Don't punish Dave for my excesses. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, folks. Thanks. Punish Dave yeah. for Dave's excesses. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>